<coughs> okay hopefully yeah yeah recording also started so this is going to be our today's uh, agenda uh, i'll walk through a simple solution and you'll talk then we will see how on premise installation uh, can is possible then uh, okay. docker installation then kubernetes okay so as we see this is my uh, murari echo or okay this is good so this is my this is simple application where i have some raml uh, simple raml looks like this one so i have two uh, two resources and three methods and the books plural uh, resource i have get method exposed and this is my example so i have you can deploy this one by right clicking the right clicking the project go to any time platform and deploy your uh, to cloud up so this is one of the way otherwise you can the other way is to deploy it in your on premise so to deploy it in on premise you can export this as a jar and uh, like this export you can export this as a jar file all the dependencies will be uh, included in those jar so go to the go to your npm platform like this go to runtime manager Once let me log out and log in from here. Any point platform will have that form. So once you log in, we have a same. I think we have deployed it here. Go to your runtime manager. Sandbox. I have already deployed this application during last demo, so I will leave this as it is. For example, my API is this API, which is running successfully. So I will click on this guy. Okay, I have this application running here. For example, books API this one. I have in the in those policy, I have added client client ID and client secret because we have enabled the policy that I will show you in a minute. So the, the service is working. So you can right click and uh, in from any point studio, you can right click and deploy the project that comes here to your cloud up, right? So. So I need to find out where is the image of the project resides. Yeah, hopefully this one. New pen studio. I'll start my new pen studio in my remote machine. Before uh, let it start, you will see what, how the API manager is being linked. So here is my application is running successfully. My API version is this one. So I have already embedded this uh, ID in the auto discovery of my uh, project that I'll show you once the project is started. So let it start. What I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the unpromise application, right? So for that, I will first remove the application deployed in cloud up. Then I will show you how to deploy it in on terms 
So this application I'm going to remove from delete. So let me take the backup of this then. So once you click on this one, there will be a new jar file which will be downloaded. So we have 16 MB of uh, all included. We can it's not harmful, so we can keep it. So the jar file is downloaded. Now we can delete the book. Okay, okay, it's deleted as well. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a by the time. So I'm going to add a server. To add a server, first of all, we need a server, right? So I am I have we have downloaded that runtime. So do we have a runtime? Yes, we have a runtime and which is downloaded and extracted here. So this I'm going here. I have to go, I will run as a command. Okay, I have to go here and just put command. It will open the directory here. Go to bin directory. Here it is. You can start the mule as a service, as a window service. Right, so of DAR. Uh, we can start just like that as a mule. But before that, we need to run this AMC setup. AMC, AMC setup will do the agent setup. To register your agent, you to register your server into any point platform, you have to deploy your run this way as it is. Copy and paste here and make the server name as J1 prime on prem on premise. Okay, so I'm going to remove this guy and run this list of things will be included in the. Okay, it's saying that we have already configured mule server. If you have, if you are uh, getting error like this, you have to go to config. So DIR, uh, remove this agent uh, CML. And then delete mule agent R uh, YML. So, and if it's done, so you can come back and do the same. We do it. Your you set up the one term, then it recreates the RAML and include many things in the code. So we by uh, let it uh, finish. So now the server is being registered on the infant platform. Now it is ready. Great. Then start the mule server. Mule dot mule. So it is started here. If you come back in the first page, say say okay. You can see here there is something on from created. As I started the mule uh, here. Turn into green. I have my application uh, jar file I have downloaded. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this guy. Typically, we will download it from, we will export it in the, from here. And I don't have a project. Uh, New project here, we will just do it. So, I'll close this one. So, the project you can just do from here. This is my uh, file. So, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the file from here, export. Okay. This is the path. I'm going to take it from here. Stamp to APA jar. We have list of jars here. This is one of the jars. So I'm going to take it to my VM. 
Maybe I'm in here. So I'm going to put that directly into the apps folder. So by the time, same time, we have mule. Uh, my mule is getting started here. You can see the logs. So once it is done, what we can see is still we start it up. So we have to wait for it. It's initializing and starting the server. So it is saying that sample API uh, has failed, but you can see the server is running. So you can see the health of the server because it's agent based. The agent is that AMC setup we have AMC underscore setup we have what we have done in the previous uh, two minutes back is the one which is registering the agent. So the agent is monitoring your heap memory, everything here. We can see the agents. Uh, everything here. It is running perfectly with Windows 10, AMD process, this one. You can see many things here. So it's asking me to allow the open vehicle to access the internet. I'm doing okay. So my mule is up, but this application is failing. This is but this is how we reply an application in the runtime in a in on -prem. So we will see what is the error before that. So we have successfully registered our application, so we can deploy that from here as well. One of the hard way is is that uh, copying your application into the app directory. So here it's saying once you see the anchor file in it, you can say it is uh, it successfully de deployed. But, uh, but if you want to underplay it, just delete the anchor file. The application itself will go away. The, 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 the server delete this whole folder. Once you delete the anchor file, the server uh, deletes this whole project. We haven't start, stopped the server, so it's supposed to delete it. We'll, it will let it delete, we'll come back. This one. So to deploy it again, we have to select this file here from here and upload the file from the download directory. Let's say it's books API. Uh, books API, that's it. Then uh, choose whether it is a cloud up or unpun. Previously we had in uh, cloud up, now we delete it. So we will be de deploying into the dev on prem now. Before that, let's um, just make sure it is the same with me. So, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the server to analyze why it has failed with the plant. What I have to do, I have to go to the logs, the logs directory. This logs directory will have something. Sorry for. So this is my new log file. Since it is a Windows, I am going to say. Okay. Uh, also, there is a we have sample API log also generated. So we will take that answer. Maybe can copy. We I know we are we are edit. Yes. Okay. It's a sample. No. So what I'm going to do, notepad. I'm going to open from there. Yeah, here is the log. Log. Where is my log? This is my log. So why it has failed, we'll see. It has failed. Just we'll see what is failed. On the here I can what I can see here is it's uh, running on eight zero two nine. There is no error in it, so it looks like it was working fine. Now anyway, I'm going to start this uh, for now. CD bin new. This is the way to start the server. Once this uh, is starting the JVM, 
keep the in the application folder if it sees any application without any anchor file it, it's supposed to delete this this application and clean it up so once that is successful what we'll do we'll go to and we'll go and deploy it in the cloud in the on prem machine what we have registered again Here it's saying, is it the same? Barney, yeah. is it a book CAP app or a sample uh, book AP application name? Application name actually doesn't matter. Once again, artifact display does not exist. New artifact exists. Null artifact. Let me see. Okay. Null artifact. Let's see. Okay. Let me deploy it from uh, from the this guy. Let's see. I have initiated the deployment. So it was successfully deployed. Now it is starting. Starting means it will push it to, to here. Okay, it's called book setting. As you said, it's correct in model. It's not sample AP books anymore. It's a book setting. So it looks like successful. I was failed again. Artifact setting is 4.2.0. Okay, we have uh, so that is not a problem. We will download this 2.0 again. Here is the down download. I have uh, yeah 4.2.0. We need it, so I'm going to download this guy. This is my runtime. It's getting downloaded here. It is 240 MB. So, when we built on the new 4.2.0 version, and we were trying to apply it in 4.1.2, so that that's a problem. So, what we have to do is we have to get rid of this guy. If you have to get rid of this guy, then that means that you are undeploying that uh, registries also. So, um, by the way, I am going to the command prompt. I'm going to cancel this guy. I'm copying the server to delete in, in order to delete this uh, one. Looks like our uh, API. Okay, let it uh, be there for some time. Let's take the up to the young son. So I'm going to take, take this one. And make it 4.2.2, 4.2, and extract it. And again, register again for the agent. How to register, register against an uh, agent? We have to go back to the any point platform. So Barney, perverse, yeah. Barney. Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, like, uh, you want to, uh, there is a, you told me two options. Right? One is we can deploy in uh, cloud. Uh, cloud up and on prem. Uh, on premise, is both are. Uh, Mule products are uh, both are mule. See, mule product. Apart from and, and from meaning, you are buying mm -hmm. a server. You are you are downloading that uh, mule version that is provided by mule, and you uh, see I have downloaded this version from mule website only. Ah, uh, that okay. Yeah. So that is the uh, mule product. Yeah, everything is mule. mule. Yeah, the uh, extra thing what we are doing is we are we are buying on OS. We are buying an VM. 
mm. on that one we are running the uh, new run time okay so let so we can also use other servers apart from these two yeah we can we can do it okay so, but we need to install it first yes correct okay then it will show up in this uh, runtime uh, manager right yeah it, it will supposed to do that so what i'm going to i'm going to register this guy guy go here put cmd it'll open so then we have to register this way as new new 4.2 version so 4.2 hyphen sir hyphen dev like that so home now it is it is registering the runtime we have downloaded again in in the any kind platform so done we have to check the any kind platform you will see two servers one is created just now it is created but it is not started so i am going to start it again here uh before that i can copy that uh, jar file into my app folder that is a hard deployment i would say where is my jar file is here book documentation yeah, once i put that i have to start this new server and um, it's getting started starting jvm starting new thing to everything and the plan Okay. Once the new server is started, it will deploy the application as well. Once you see, it, it, it's expecting automatically. If the application is successful, it will let me jar. If that is successful, it will create the anchor file also. The anchor file is also started. That part successfully. This has no problem. so we will we can test this guy right? for that we will check what is a yaml file because we have to access that thing so okay open it in no parenting so it is a 8 by 8 was exposed uh, so go to your uh, now local host Then copy, copy this guy, and yeah, here it is. Yeah, to try to access from local. So see this one. So it looks like four zero four. Then eight zero eight five. Console. So if we console is here, I'm getting books. Right, it works here. Okay, it's books. It's not students. That was an issue. So it worked. Locally, it worked. Right, Murari. So I'll I'll summarize what we what I have done. So I have developed one application, and uh, I have bought one VM. In that VM, I have downloaded the new runtime, uh, the right version, 4.2 here. So I have extracted and registered against the AnyFind platform. So once it is running, you can deploy the application like this, like this apps. If you download this one now, it's it, if you download that file, it will automatically undeploy it. It will take some more time. Um, see, it's, there is something. See, undeployed artifact. So it's gone now. So it's working perfectly. So now I'm going to do deployment through, um, sorry, is it application? Deploy an application. So uh, I'll upload a file. Upload this jar again. Say that it is it is uploaded. Say where you want to deploy. In my case, I'm deploying it in this area. So. Just deploy it. Deploying successful. So it is starting. That means you are deploying it here. You are up, you are uploading the jar file into any point platform. Uh, through agent, it is uh, monitoring, right? So it's managing the applications as well. 
so one is at which ip is which ip up now go on hit it here but my it should work now that's it so your on premise is done what i'm going to do i'm going to delete this, this on premise is uh, we are moving to the next one called docker how you can for example you will uh, use the third um, contained contained environment for each application to scale it as long as as much as you want so that is called docker um, uh, so what we are going to do first we will see how to install docker how to install your application inside docker right also if you don't want to do yeah camera yeah, so you uh, run uh, run the server server through this local host right since mm -hmm. it our server is installed in a uh, local yes local yes okay if it is a cloud op you will get something url like this ah uh, correct mm -hmm. yeah so we have done a cloud op environment and on premise mm -hmm. we have seen both on on premise okay so now what so what done? about uh, uh, policies what are we can set policies for this yeah that policies this is just like your cloud up in terms of policies everything so whatever we do in the cloud same uh, is applicable for this uh, yes yes correct and uh, right the same tool using the same tool we can go and uh, set up the policies for the correct okay so what we will do to extend our uh, talk we will not stop this environment we will start again to push on policy and that's the right point made so what we are going to do we are, our applications are linked here through our anypoint manager we'll go to the anypoint manager we have an active the the problem here is it will take some more time to push the policy to the actual runtime that is only thing Okay. 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 Sir. But but uh, in the, in new it has uh, uh, lots of things to take care of when you have it in um, on prime. But it is a good learning point, a learning uh, curve, I would say, because your agent registration it will happen. It will happen. Your policy will be pushed. Everything will happen behind the scenes. You will not know. But once you have it in on premise, you can see that once you. once you push this application policies from here you would be seeing that see there is no policy right now so i would apply the client id enforcement 1.2.2 comes with the policy yeah just say okay so it is there now you should be seeing this one very soon here now the time is Seven something. I couldn't see the time. The policies will be pushed, but uh, it's two forty five. Two forty five. There are no files came here. That means that it will take some more time to push the push it. once that is pushed then you can see so in the meanwhile to enable to install something doc in docker we will have procure one more machine from that is in azure so i'm going to procure one more machine in azure i have already done that so i'm going to take it take uh, i'm going to uh, barney one more one more question barney yes yes yeah tell me initially you installed one version right uh, mule 4.1.5 uh, why why we got the error uh, it was not uh, able to deploy the application right so due to yeah. the version uh, yeah that is because of version issue because it is 4.2 4.2 but you gave the old version old version it won't support right okay you built a new version but your your deployed an old version that is the problem 
So, on the, uh, any any point, uh, studio is a latest version. What we have now is a latest version. Yeah, right. So it will support only the four point two. Mm, later, latest, uh, later version only it will support. <laughs> So still, uh, I I know see there is data. It's supposed to push. Uh, we can do one thing. It's saying it's inactive. It's a failed failed. There are two applications have failed here, so we have to correct the thing. What I will do? It's a book API, it's supposed to deploy. But here I see is two applications are there. It might happen because from here, student employee is trying to do the same. So I, what I'm going to do, I'm going to deploy, they will, they'll delete this guy. So policies are not reflected, right? Yeah, it's still not reflected. Okay. Because the application has failed here. Yeah. I'm going to restart this mule. Yes, uh, let it be. Mule. I'm going to start it. I don't want this way also employee. Barney, one more thing. Yeah, Is there any uh, UI interface to check whether the server is up and running or not? What is it? UI, yeah? You want UI? Ah. This is the UI. Go to runtime manager and check whether the oh. whether the server is up or not. Oh. There you go. I'm going to delete these guys because it's causing some issues. Books API, book API, many things. Too. So, so I think this should straight away work. Books API is failed because it's using the same port. That's why it's failing. So what I'll do, I'll, I'm going to again uh, start restart this app. Once you deploy anything, if you wanted to. If if something is not reflected in on-prem, you have to restart the service. In on-prem, the major difference between your cloud open and on-prem is you will be having downtime in on-prem because you when you undeploy, the server is down. But in in uh, Cloud Hub, there will be another worker when during the deployment, uh, it, the uh, Mule any point platform will keep the other running instance working until this other version is up. Okay. Also, on uh, on premise uh, system, uh, we, we have to set the port number manually, right, from our side. Uh? Yeah. For each, uh, the, your property is the one. Your property will keep uh, keep uh, mm -hmm. The property file you have for code number exposed, right? If you change yeah, that, file. yeah, right. That will uh, okay. that will take care. So we should not give the same uh, port number for uh, both two applications. Yes, right? it will fail. Yeah. Uh, to fail. Yeah. So this will not happen in uh, cloud. It won't happen because that is a separate worker. That is what the containerization and the thing comes up. Sample oh. AP books. I couldn't find this application at all. I'm going to tell this guy. Then I start this guy also. Sometimes you have to clear this guy apps dot mule folder. It will contain this mail. This also does not have a sample API. I'm not sure where it comes from. Mule apps. That's it. 
So I'm going to deploy it from Bernie, is there any material for a mule enterprise system standard? What, what is a mule enterprise system? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Is there any material, uh, study material for that? Yeah, yeah. we have uh, doc, doc.mulesop.com. That is the one. Oh, okay. So if you want to debug anything, uh, we should have some material, right? Initially. Yeah, yeah. That's not pretty. That's not pretty hard. You can, you'll be able to do it. Okay. Okay, I'm going to deploy the same application again. Application, service application. Okay, I'm going to, this is not letting me to do that because the server is not running. Yeah. I'll start the server first. If you see that server is down, then you can't do anything with that. So the dev on time, I will delete this guy because you don't need it. What we need is this um, this on this version of it. Still, I have no idea where it is taking it from. But basically that policy applying is similar to this guy. So I'm not going to go ahead with that one. I will uh, scrap this server. Okay, Muravi, it will be same, similar to this one. Yeah, it's fine, fine. Yeah. We'll go to the next topic. Huh? Yeah. Okay, and what I'm, I have to do, so we have registered against this server. We need this server, however. So, I'm going to clean up the server. Okay, I what I'm I'm going to do? I'm going to delete this here first. Delete 4.2. We don't. Burning, burning. Yeah. I have yeah. one doubt. You uh, open that uh, server terminal. Console, console unit. Yeah, one second. Yeah. Open it. Yeah. Uh, it's not showing up. Ah, uh, yeah, fine. Which version are you trying? It is 4.1.5. Okay, so I saw you. Oh my god, that's a, that's a thing. It bullshit at me actually. That's what you should not plan any demos apart from your uh, this one. <laughs> <laughs> then you will keep on, in a single point, you will be debugging for hours. That's what. Okay, anyway. Uh, now I yeah, yeah, okay. Good. I, I, that's what I so I, I should not supposed to keep many words in it. That's uh, listen. Okay, now I have deleted. I'm extracting 4.2 again because yeah. so to okay, then it's a, it's a it's a brand new topic, something called Docker. 
if you want to docker you have to go to docker hub you have to write some files similar to this one that is the first step go register register docker uh, dockerhub.com then go to your uh, github and write some files like this what docker has to do so i have a docker file this actually starting from here your docker hub connects to github fetches this file then executes it one by one my first line shows that but you first you tell me what is docker when we use docker okay the need of docker comes into picture when you wanted to have for example we had books api right in a single server you wanted to run books api 10 times how would you do that i have i have a server i have one apps folder i have deployed there but i wanted to scale up to 10 instances you you so you got what i'm saying see how on premise applications we will deploy end of the day it will come and sit here one app i can i can create that is my books that books api is here so if i run only one instance is running Right. Correct. Correct. My yeah. Whole, my whole CPU is dedicated to that one. Hmm. But I want to logically, logically allocate the CPU to my uh, priority will APIs. So, for example, if my books API will, will if we need the twenty percent of the CPU, I would be able to give it. That feature is given by Docker and Kubernetes. Okay. So, that, so we will be having ten uh, APIs in the single server. logically separated uh, memory logically separated cpu we can we will be able to give that's why that's a need of docker that's why we so need, yeah request is more uh, we can have uh, more number of instances yeah right if you see for example if you have a 10 applications in a single cpu all the applications are treated equally correct right uh, you cannot have yeah, yeah. scale it if you want to scale it you need to have one more uh, run time then you can scale it like that instead of having 10 things you can have it right like that also docker they will explain uh, it is a layer between your os and applications your it's called it's a dependency include uh, i mean if for example if your software needs need your particular api needs some amount uh, for example uh, you have you need two jars in a sing, in a, two libraries in a single machine right for example this pdf yes. generator 10 and 11 is required 10 one api is using 11 on one api is using but in a single uh, run a single os you will be able to install only one software mm. to main to separate this dependency they have created in between uh, just above this os they have created one more layer that is docker so you will include only the dependencies and your applications in uh, in that so it will work seamlessly yeah so that is what docker is needed the yeah, same way how it works in cl cloud also right yes yeah cloud yeah correct cloud uses behind the scene uh, uh, uh docker and kubernetes if you want the same functionality in um, on premise in on premise or azure or aws the preferred way or the the mule soft uh, given way is to have app fabric mule soft app fabric mm -hmm. so for that you need you would be needing three systems to maintain kubernetes and two at least two systems of your uh, mule runtime mule runtime okay so, so this will perform like a docker mm, that, that is uh, and see docker It, it is a separate it's isolation of your uh, dependencies and if you create 10 dockers dockers will not be able to communicate to the other docker containers so the con to container communication google has created one uh, con container management like uh, like docker swarm but it is a, the preferable one is k8 or kubernetes that is a mules that is a google's product that is given to the community okay yeah Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Then I'll go and uh, so that is why we need a doctor. So to have doctor, doctor, 
the preferred way would be having a unix owning a unix uh, version see for that you need to register in docker hub that is a step one step two would be having a file similar to like this so this file says what install jdk first this is the meaning of the first file second file second one has no meaning who is maintaining this uh, docker so what i have i'm not going to show you that uh, the application what we have developed just now i'm going to show you the simplest one for now once it is working then we'll go ahead with the other ap approach so i'm going to get 4.1.5 version then my sample jar application uh, okay then i'm going to extract them i'm going to give some permission all permission uh, then i'm going to execute this new that's that's the whole thing and it's exposing mm. 8089 pardon me one second now uh, yeah. where, where we have to run this yeah go to docker once you write once you finish writing and link the github into the docker hub go to builds so oh. it will just ensure that this your build has no problem see i, I have many builds which has so, so many issues and ended up it, it will say what is the docker file and what is the build the logs see this is my logger file the docker file then oh, okay. my builds. these are my builds so it says so first it what it says it's it's taking it from s3 bucket if you see amazon from amazon s3 bucket it is taking the zip if you come long way down so 50 percent uh, 75 this uh, docker is a uh, free service or uh, oh, premium our, service open source docker, open source uh, docker enterprise is a, a paid version and ce community edition we are using community edition so we have now working with the licenses so this 4.1.5 zip is done and i am downloading the sample jar file which i am supposed to deploy there so that is done so i am extracting these files my runtime files it's when it's done then uh, run the ch mode and it's finally executing the command this is the command yeah so what i'm going to do i'm going to open the unix box this is my ubuntu box you can connect with the ssh so that's what I'm going to do. I'm copying this public ad IP address and going here, creating a new session. This is my IP. It is a user based, so burn. So, so I'm in. So I have to provide the root user name. This is my root user. So that I, I I will not be able so that I will be having admin privilege Docker to check Docker yeah Docker is installed to get uh, if you want to install newly you have to have this guy to install Docker here so you need to uh, yeah this guy yes. So once you do that, it will be installed in this direction. So we can't install this in uh, Windows. Uh, just we have to install only Linux. Uh, yeah, it's Linux based. If you install it in Docker, also the end of the end of the day, you'll be putting it in Linux only. So I prefer uh, Ubuntu. Ubuntu is uh, my favorite actually. Ubuntu. Uh, yeah. So you will be having in, in so once you install, you can install. You can check your uh, CD hyphen. Let me shrink this guy. Yeah, CD var lib slash docker. So, this is where your containers will use. Right now, I have four containers, that's all. I'm going to remove them all. So, docker to kill them, to delete them, docker rm. That's it. Docker rm. Docker rm. Dr. Aram. Okay, it's all done. So you can see now. So how many images I have? I have one image. No, no, I, yeah, I have one image. You can see that. That 
Okay, I will remove these images as well. It's saying size none, image ID. Okay, one second. Again, I'll put images. It's it seems some problem issue. So I will remove Docker RMI then image ID. It removes that images as well. So it's deleted everything. So it looks like it's a new thing now. Uh, images if you put nothing will come. Clear it. Now I'm going to pull the Docker. So to pull any Docker image from the Docker Hub, see you're you're going to pull that Docker right. Once you you have to pull this image from Docker Hub. For that once you build that, we you are going to take it. So what is my doc? What is my major name? This is my image name. New Barney Docker slash New Doc. So that is the one. So I will say New Docker login. Barney Docker password is this guy. Uh, oopsie. Insert password. Okay. Let me try one second. Barney Docker. Barney, one second. I have doubt. Huh? Yeah, one second. Then to the password. You can have. Yeah, tell me. See, if you want to uh, run this in a Docker, first what you need to do is, do is you need to uh, create a jar file and you need to put that in a website, right? Docker. Yeah. No, no. From then you need to. No. Hmm. There is no jar file involved here. See, ah. This is because this is to, in, to understand simple Docker, this is a Docker, that's it. You can on, have only one file. Okay. Only one line. That is also can be Docker. Docker. <laughs> what I am trying to say, what I am trying to do here, I am installing first Mule, then I am putting that uh, jars actually. I am installing hmm. one by one. Installing means I'm not getting you. You're installing the new enterprise. No, or? what I'm doing is yeah, W get W get is to get these things from S3 bucket. Uh. Okay. See, for this one, you have to first download this one and put it in S3 bucket. S3 bucket, how it looks like is uh, you have to go to Amazon S3 bucket. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. You have right. down. You you have kept the two files. One is zip file and jar file in uh, yeah. S3. S3 bucket. Then I'll, uh, I'll I'll show it in a minute. Once once this demo is successful, right? Then I'll I'll do that also. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going back to here, and uh, I'm going to pull the Docker pull, Barani Docker slash uh, Mule Doc. Once I do that, it's going to take. See if you see the build, right? This whole build, this whole thing, it will be done here. So let it download my image. By the time we will see what is the command we have to uh, run this Docker. So this is my Docker. Okay, this is my Docker uh, actual Docker. See, I have one new application which is going to run on eight zero eight nine. But I wanted to map it. See, this is the first is a keyword Docker run d. What is the name of the Docker? Simply, I'm giving some name. I iPhone P is the port mapping. I have to map one port, which is my API is listening, with the with the VM port, with the machine's port. For example, I I'm the API is listening on eight zero eight nine, but I don't want to expose that. I want to expose eight zero eight zero. So that one I am keeping, and this is the log file mapping. So my my Docker, my Docker's logs will be. Given here, this is my local. See, this is my local mapping. This is my local, okay. Okay. and this is my intent containers uh, path. So that's it. So no, who, which Docker do I want to run? This Barani underscore this one. So by the time it should be over. So this is what I'm doing. So if I want to access that uh, access that application, right? What how I have to do? HTTP. I'm hitting the local host of this thing. Eight zero eight zero I'll give then sample HR. This is my application name. My application listening 
inside wait inside this machine 8089 but i don't want to expose that i want to expose on 8082 that's where the port mapping has been done so now i will be able to curl it curl is a command to test that text with is so it's a get real pretty straightforward but before that i have to run this guy so what it is doing it's it's transferring all my docker into the local machine now I have kept my Docker uh, version as a open source, so you can have it. You can have. It. I mean, I have to press public so you can have a look at it before you creating it. I did the same when uh, with with someone else. Before, for me, first uh, starting is uh, from someone else's actually. So the download is complete here. Yeah? Will complete for most of them. Like it's extracting. Okay, done. So I'm going to run this guy. That is also done. So to check whether the server is running or not, Docker PS. PS would show that whether it is running or not. So now I can go back to my to here and copy this guy to check whether my API is running or not. So here it's saying some issues. So we have to check that issue. What is it? C U R L C T P local host. Maybe I'm trying this situation. Sample is gone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no. Sorry. So now I, we have to debug this this guy. So what I'm going to do? Let's single. Uh, it will have mule folder tv log. Ls tv logs. Ls then see the actual problem here. It's saying two things: sample API books log and this guy. But I am interested in this guy. Sample HR log. Probably the service is up just up now, or maybe. So I'm going to try now. Okay. So I'm going to copy it from here. Ah, it looks like it works. So it worked. This is so great, but if you want to debug this thing, something. No, what was the problem? No, it, was, it was just starting. The server was starting. Oh. So okay, okay. even now, if you say that you had some issues and you wanted to debug, uh, debug the issues, then how you how do you do that, right? So you can go to directly cd slash var slash lib slash uh, docker container. Now you list it. Ls. Then this is the only uh, container ID it has. You can go inside and see what is the what is it saying. In case of uh, you have uh, you have a Docker but it is not installed successfully, you can use this guy. See, it has the same uh, log files here. This this will even though if the application is not successful, this is the place you have to try it. I'm going to clear this guy and come out. And um, but we, there is a command you can inside go inside Docker itself actually. CD uh, sorry Docker Docker exe. So I have it here. I'm going to fetch it from my cheat sheet. I would call. There is the Docker exe. There you go. For this one, you need a container ready for that one. Docker ps. That will give you a container ready. That one. This it here. Go back and see. You are in. See if you see the prompt has changed inside. Now you are inside the container. So now you have to do ls. That gives you most of the thing. 
see this like on premise you have seen right you have apps folder you have logs folder you have config folder everything you have bin folder i'm going to bin now from here you will be able to register your uh, see that amc setup i have done right that is yeah sorry is that so you can start mule from here or you can stop the mule i'm going to stop this mule because everything is worked so uh, i have told everything i believe so let me have a look at my cheat sheet i have told you that pull images docker images docker delete we have seen already docker run we have seen already that ex easy is the one that we have already seen so we have done almost the okay, next we are going to jump in kubernetes okay for that i don't need anything here so i'm going to stop mule now mule stop sorry new will stop so it's going to stop here if you go back to the unifine platform okay this is not, this is a separate application this is a separate installation of docker but now we are going to do is different one now we have we are going to in, in embed our api inside the docker file we are going to change the docker file we are going to change that version as well. For that, we are going back to the Windows machine we had. Here, we had registered our servers. So how to see that servers registered or not? So we have to go inside. Let me check whether I have to split this video or not. Let me one second. <clears throat> What yeah. you have installed is a 4.1.5 right in Docker. Right. What we have in our local is a 4.2, right? Yeah, yeah. That that we are going to replace that in the Docker file. That's what I'm saying. So in in coming version, right? But you are going to see. We are going to change this file first. We are first. We are going to add 4.2 in S3 vector. And add that API in this S3 vector, right? Then uh, we do the rest of the things as it is, right? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so that's going to be a separate video that that will make more sense because you if you wanted to split. So I'm going to stop the recording right now. Then uh, we'll start it again. Yeah. Okay. So in the coming session, you will be giving uh, with the latest version, right? Yeah, right. Four point two. Four point two. Yeah. So how we will run through this our API manager? Even that also will be covered in next session. Or? Yes, yes, that will that will be covered. See, with one single Docker, uh, this one it's not an issue. I have mm. shown, like I have shown you. You can go here mm. inside. You can run mm. the AMC setup. You can register this um, against that uh, any point platform. That command is used here, right? Mm. Where is that command is used? Any point platform. So this gives from here, right? This command, if you run, it will link. That's all. But the question is in Kubernetes when you have multiple dockers, how do you manage it? That's the question. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are going to start. We are. Uh, we, I'm going to stop this video and we'll start again. Yeah. Okay.